Okay, I'm going to try this again. Round two. Uh, I've got the work sheet on the right side of the screen. I've got my work paper on the left side. You can see this first problem is already drawn out here. This is my second go around the video. Had some issues, so try it again. Um, the problem on the right, uh, the, the uh, directions say choose the best answer, and the diagram shows a sailboat. What is the approximate area of the sailboat? So we're going to have to probably round our answer and choose the best one. We've got four choices down there. To solve this problem, I need to remember that the area of a triangle is equal to one-half the base times the height. Okay, and we, we find the height by drawing um, a, a perpendicular line from the base to the top of the triangle. Okay, so creating a 90 degree angle, we draw a straight line from the base to the top. And, and we already see in this diagram, okay, right here you can see that the height is um, 14 feet. Right? But we don't have the base. We don't have that value down there. So over here on this side, what I've done is I've taken 14, one of the legs, and squared that value, and added B, the other leg, and squared that value, and that equals the hypotenuse, or C. I'm drawing this little sailboat over here. Okay, 14 squared is 196, and 18 squared is 324. And then I just subtract 196 from both sides, and I find that B squared equals 128. And then, um, so B is equal to the square root of 128, or 11.3. And then I took this value right here. Before I, before I rounded it to 11.3 so I could be more precise, I put the square root of 128, which is my base, and I multiply that by my height, 14, and then I multiply it by 1 half, because that's how I find the area of a triangle, right? And I found that that was 79.195 feet approximately. And then if I go over here, right, my best answer choice is most definitely 79 square feet. A is the best answer for number six. Okay, you guys are going to keep working on, um, on your line paper, and I'm going to keep working on the tablet here. Okay, and in problem seven, Right, if we read this problem, it says that, let's see here, the television screen has a 25-inch diagonal. All right, so there's a 25-inch diagonal. I'm just going to look at my image down here, and it's right there, 25 inches. And it has a 15-inch height, okay, 15-inch height. That's, that's this right here, okay, my height is 15. What is the area of the screen? All right, well, I know the area of a rectangle. I'm going to go back to that. Area is equal to length times width. Well, I don't have a width, right? I have a length. But if I use the Pythagorean theorem, and I call these my legs because they are adjacent to my right angle, and I call this C because it's opposite of the right angle. Then I do A squared, or 15 squared, plus B squared equals 25 squared. And I'm using my calculator, and I know 15 squared, or I just remember my perfect squares. At this point, we've been practicing for a while. You probably remember some of these. Is equal to 625. And then if I subtract 225 from both sides, then I find that B squared is equal to 400, and the square root of 400 is 20. Okay, so the bottom side of that rectangle, the, the base of that television, is 20. And if B equals 20, or W equals 20, and L, or A, equals 15, and 15 times 20, well, I know 15 times 10 is 150, and I multiply that by 2, and that's 300. So the area is 300 square inches. Okay, that's number 7. That's finding the area of a television screen 
with uh, having the diagonal and the length. Okay. Now we're going to look at number eight. Number eight says solve. You can pause this video anytime you need to. Okay. There are two forces A and B that pull at right angles from each other. The resultant force can be represented as a diagonal of the rectangle. Alright, so I've got two forces, right? I've got A and B that pull at right angles from each other. So I've got force A pulling this way, and I've got force B pulling this way, right? Force A and force B. Gosh, I can't, I can't seem to get that to do what I want. Let's see here. Just going to go force A and force B right there. And then the resultant force is a diagonal. The resultant force, the force that comes from that, the force that results from that is a diagonal. Now it says that these are at right a 90 degree angle. So that's a 90 degree angle. Now, if if I've got those pulling at a 90 degree angle, this um, this box up here should be making a rectangle, right? And so this should be a right angle, and this should be a right angle. And let's see. So, there's a 21 pound force and a 28 pound force. Let's see what we got here. 21 pound force. Back to this. 21 pound and 28 pounds. And the resultant force is 35. Okay, so I'll just label my diagram. Now, if if the left side of the rectangle is 21 and the bottom side is 28, well then the top is 28 and the right is 21. And it's asking, uh, are these um, forces pulling at right angles? So if 21 squared plus 28 squared, the two short sides of that triangle add up to the square of the long side, um, than it is pulling at a right angle. And if we type all of these numbers into our calculator, 21 to the second power plus 28 to the second power, we get 1,225, and 35 to the second power is 1,225. And because are pulling at right angles. stuff out with words like that in complete sentences, we have a better, more complete understanding of the concept and the fact that it applies to real world problems. Okay. Now, in number nine, it's asking us to justify it. It says, Lori has a storage box shaped like a rectangular prism, so it's three-dimensional, with a length of four feet, a width of three feet, and a height of two feet. She has a fishing pole that is six feet long. Can she store the fishing pole in the box? So the longest direction in between, uh, inside that box, is from one corner to the other. And I'm trying to find if from one corner to the other, is this thing going to be six feet? So I'm trying to find, I've already drawn a three-dimensional, three-dimensional, uh, three-dimensional 
box here. So um, this is going to be uh, this is going to represent the fishing pole. Okay, the fishing pole can go across here, just like this, that diagonal right there. Now, we could use the Pythagorean theorem, that's the fishing pole, okay? We could use the Pythagorean theorem twice, right? First, what we could do is, across the bottom of this box, we could draw a diagonal right here, okay? I could go just like this. And this dotted line I just drew in there is the bottom diagonal, okay? This line right here is the bottom diagonal, and this line right here is the fishing pole. Now, the problem tells us that it's four feet, oh, Four feet wide, three, four feet long, three feet wide, and two feet high. Okay, so I've got um, four feet by um, three feet by two feet. Okay, so this thing is, is four by three by two, or rather two and three. Okay. So, so to, to find, find that bottom diagonal, I know this side is also 3, and I know this side is 2, right? And this side is 4, and this side is 4, and this side is 4. You can label all those parts, okay? Um, so, so I have uh, the Pythagorean theorem where I could find this bottom triangle right here, this blue triangle. I could find the bottom diagonal and then use that as part of the green triangle, right? I could then find the green triangle using the hypotenuse of the bottom triangle, the bottom triangle, or I can use this distance formula, right? I can find the length of the diagonal not the distance formula, the diagonal, D equals diagonal. I can take the length squared plus the width squared plus the height squared and the final length of that diagonal. So I'm going to put in 4 equals L and 3 equals W and 2 equals height. So if I do 4 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared and take the square root of the sum of those squares, I find the square root of 29 is equal to the length of the diagonal, okay, which is approximately 5.4, I think. D, let's see, I'm going to turn on the calculator and take the square root of 29. And then it equals 5.38, or 5.4 approximately. And since the diagonal is only 5.4 feet, and that's less than 6, the pole will not fit in the box. The pole will not fit in the box. We can continue and look at the Pythagorean theorem way, right? If I want to find this bottom diagonal, BD, that's going to be equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared. Okay, so the bottom diagonal is equal to um, 25. And so the square root of 25, the bottom diagonal is equal to 5. Okay, so then I take that in this other triangle, I say this is 5, and I say this is 2, and so FP, or the fishing pole diagonal, fishing pole diagonal is equal to 
5 squared plus 2 squared. So the fishing pole diagonal is equal to 29. Right? This, the fishing pole diagonal is basically my C value. And so my fishing pole diagonal is approximately 5.4. And that diagonal formula over here, length plus width plus height, is definitely the easier way to go with this three-dimensional box, trying to find the length of the diagonal. And that's the classwork for today. If you have questions, please reach out to me. I'm here to help. Thanks.